You don't need permission to dream, but you do need to be picky about the people with whom you share that dream. Because once your dream comes true, not only do you have to learn to live with it, you also have to learn to deal with people who resent you for having and following it. It happens to everybody. People start warning you to test your dreams in the crucible of reality, imploring you to step out of wonderland and expose your dream to the light, and begging you to submit yourself to the occasional beating by the practicality stick. And it's not necessarily malicious. It doesn't mean the world is conspiring to keep you from your dreams. It's just that at some level, some people don't like to see you pursuing your dreams. It's disenfranchising. It reminds them how far they are from living their own. And that's the downside of dreaming. The slings and arrows of outrageous fortune often show up in the form of bitterness and anger and resistance. And not because you've done something wrong, but because somebody else hasn't done something right. It's human nature. Every society uses ridicule as a means of social control. So you're only free to the degree that you allow other people's doubts to manipulate you. And the secret is not getting rid of the resenters, but transforming yourself into a person less likely to be derailed by resenters. Here's a helpful mantra that you can say in response. I respect your opinion of my work. I respect your opinion of my work. Not only does that mantra leave resenters nowhere to go, but the practice of responding to negativity with an unemotional and undemonstrative and calm way, it helps us grow in our ability to be in control of ourselves. Look, having dreams is what makes life tolerable. Of course, most people only get to dream their dream. Few of us are lucky enough to actually live our dream. And so be careful who you share it with because not everybody deserves a backstage pass to your dream.
so 